This anointed audiobook titled Understanding the Gift of the Holy Spirit you are about listening to is authored by Evangelist Gibson C. Eze. Evangelist Gibson C. Eze is an anointed servant of the Most High God, graced to proclaim the message of healing to his generation. I believe strongly in my heart that you will be richly blessed as you listen. I would like to start this way by first of all saying to you that understanding the gift of the Holy Spirit is a book that has changed many people's lives. And because of this, I've decided to put it in an audio form so as to avail my fellow listeners opportunity, those who may not be able to read it through books, at least you can listen to it, play it in any form you can, in your car, in your home, or put it in any form in your computer. I believe strongly this book is going to affect your life for better in Jesus name this book is classified into about five different sections understanding the gift of the Holy Spirit is classified into five different sections section one is the notable misconception about the gift of the Holy Spirit section two the manifestation of the gift of the Holy Spirit section three is the understanding of the gifts of the Holy Spirit section 4 is the ingredient for the increase of the spiritual gift finally we'll talk about section 5 the killers of these spiritual gifts having said this let us go quickly into section 1 section 1 simply is titled the notable misconception about the gifts of the Holy Spirit again section one the notable misconception about the gift of the holy spirit now under section one we'll consider chapter one which says your use of spiritual gifts shows you are in good time with god this we are going to consider your use of spiritual gifts shows you are in good times with god these are some notable misconceptions about the gift of the holy spirit your use of spiritual gifts shows you are in good times with God. Judges chapter 16, from verse 1 to 3. The theme echoed by the passage of the above Bible. Passage is not a complete truth. To get the, the new gift of God and taste working in harmony and total submission to the leading of the Spirit. But this does not eliminate the fact that after God has given his gift to his servant, it cannot be misused. Experience have shown that it takes constant fellowship and consistent relationship to retain his gift. Hence, having a good relationship with God is one thing, while the use of spiritual gifts upon one's life is another. Look at this equation. Manifestation of the gift of the Holy Spirit minus good relationship with God equals to man's downfall. Two, good relationship with God plus the manifestation of the spiritual gift equals to honor and greater moves of the spirit equation three good relationship with god minus the manifestation of the gift of the spirit equals potential greatness and move of god let us analyze above equation one after another i believe that the better understanding of this will enhance our relationship with god equation one the manifestation of the gift of the holy spirit is in one's life minus a good relationship with God will bring one's downfall. The equation is this. It is possible to manifest the gift of God without being in good times with the giver of the gift. Yes, it is possible. Even the disciples of Jesus could not believe it was possible until Jesus says so. If you look at Matthew chapter 7 from verse 19 to 23, Jesus talked about the fruit that one's bear. He said it is possible for one to manifest the gift and at the same time he will tell them that he knows not the person jesus says he will tell them that he knows them not which means it is possible to manifest the gift of the spirit without god knowing you he says his disciples should not quantify the use of spiritual gifts with a good relationship with god if a man abides not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gathered them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. john 15 verse 6 
Jesus said, a man can prophesy, speak in tongue, or cast out demons without being in good times with him. This means that some people can be gifted by God in the past, but because they have gone astray, they became disconnected from God. The repercussion is what Jesus said, I know you not. This means he disowned such people. This is domination. This is the downfall of the man, except he retraced his full step. Equation 2. Being in good time with God and at the same time manifesting the gift of God simply means one has received the approval of heaven. Show me a man who is in good time with God, manifesting spiritual gifts, and I will show you a man that will be celebrated, honored, and valued by men Jesus echoed this to his disciples. Therefore, whoever hear this saying of mine and does them, I will liken them unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Jesus likened the man who manifests spiritual gifts and is as well as peace with God to a wise man who built his house on the rock. The message is that the man who uses spiritual gifts without keeping his relationship with God is unwise. Such a person will suffer the shock of sudden collapse of the building. Therefore, one must be careful to effectively combine the manifestation of spiritual gifts with one's relationship with God. It is dangerous to one's spiritual life to do otherwise. Equation 3. Being in good time with God, but yet not manifesting spiritual gifts, equals to potential greatness. Such a person has laid his foundation well. It is a matter of time before great manifestation will be witnessed. The most important factor here is the ability to do the basic. Once that is in place, God provoke the grace for great manifestation of his power. Being in good time with God, the greatest thing that can happen to a man but because when God is with you, His glory will definitely be seen in your life. You cannot be at peace with God without His glory being seen in your life. John 15 verse 7 and 8 talks about the fruit we bear as a result of our following of Jesus. If you go down further, you will discover Jesus promised the manifestation of His presence in the life of any man who is in good time with Him. He said the individual will bear much fruit. Do you want to bear much fruit for God here on earth? Then you must be in good times with God. Again, being carried away by the manifestation of the gift of the Spirit without being mindful of one relationship with God is dangerous. Be careful. Today, many people are carried away by the ephora of spiritual gift that they neglect their relationships with God. Our relationship with God must be carefully groomed even as we try to grow in the use of gift. Don't forget that the respect, honor, fame, and true spiritual gift will still remain when the gift is gone. But because the source of the gift has been terminated, the glory that goes with them may be short-lived. When a branch of a tree is cut off from the stem, it is only a matter of time before it gets withered. Jesus himself said, Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except he abide in the vine. No man can bear fruit, except ye abide in me. John chapter 15 from verse 4. One of my greatest discoveries about spiritual gifts is that when any of them begins to manifest, operate in your life, those around you will notice it. If you were previously a nobody, it will announce you for the world to see and celebrate. But when it departs from you, nobody may notice of it. The individual may still be able to display the characteristics of the presence of the Holy Spirit without knowing that the Spirit has departed from him. In other words, the Holy Spirit does not in any way announce his departure, but you shall discover by the fruit one's bears. This is why a person whom God uses must be very careful not to be carried away as to neglect his personal relationship with God. He must not be carried away by the enormity of demand placed on him or the praises that people heap on him so as to forget his personal relationship with God. God cannot compromise his standard because of your involvement with his work. Note that it is possible to work tirelessly for God without the God of the work. 
God can leave you to diminish in the effort of his work if you refuse to heed to his warning. God wants to be in control of his work and he expects individuals to recognize the awesome power and influence that come from his presence. To go the other way around is to set a trap for ultimate failure in the service of God. This is the advice of the wisest king that have ever lived, King Solomon. In Proverbs 14 verse 12, he said, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Learn from Samson. I started this topic by writing out some scriptural verses about Samson. Now, I would like to briefly discuss him. The purpose is not to mock Samson, but to learn from his mistake. A wise man learns from other people's mistake. Why a fool waits until he becomes a victim. Samson was carried away with the enormity of God's gift upon his life. He became spiritually blind as a result of his selfish love for Delilah. The fear of God left him. He never realized when the spirit left him. Samson slept with prostitutes at night, but operated in the power of God in the day. This formed the basis of my concern for ministers of God today. May we never be blinded by the manifestation of the Spirit of God to the detriment of our relationship with God. Come to think of it. When did the Holy Spirit depart from Samson? Was it when his hair was shaved? Or when the Philistine captured him or removed his eyes? Or was it when Samson opened the secret of the presence of God to his wife? My opinion is that Samson was disconnected from the Spirit of God when he went into the prostitute at Gaza. Judges chapter 16 verse 1 that made him to lose his relationship with God there he became disconnected from God but mind you the power of God continued to work in his life the Bible says in Judges chapter 16 verse 3 that Samson laid at midnight and arose at midnight and he took the two posts and went away with them bar and all and put them upon his shoulder and carried them up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron this is incredible. Samson woke from the laps of a prostitute, took up the gate and post and put it on his shoulder and went away. It was really unbelievable. And that is exactly my cry through this book. We should be careful not to conclude that we are in good time with God because of the manifestation of his power in our life. Samson woke up from the bed of adultery and the spirit of God still manifested through him to do the impossible. What I am saying about Samson is this. The power of God upon his life still worked for him. Even when he has sinned against God by defiling himself. Therefore the capture of Samson, the cutting of his hair, the removal of his eyes by the Philistine were byproduct of the fact of his disconnection from the spirit of God. When you cut off the head of a snake, it may still act in a dangerous manner for a while. But this may not last long because its head is already off this is similar to what happened to samson there are many samson around today rejected by the spirit of god like Saul, but they are still so much on the throne the holy spirit has long departed from them but they are still being celebrated by the world oh lord wake up all our foreign heroes in jesus name never you allow earthly glory to deprive you of the presence of god this is my heart to you my reader your relationship with god must be intact if you must last long in his work we must never compromise our relationship with god notwithstanding the ephora that may trade the use of his gift the word of god should be our guide we should not deviate from the command of god is irrespective of our of the circumstances before us Chapter 2 in section 1, manifestation of the spiritual gift shows you are a candidate of heaven. Matthew chapter 7, 21 to 23. Not everyone that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. This is a expository. Thank God that this statement was made directly by Jesus Christ himself. 
Remember, he is our greatest role model. Jesus was able to distinguish between the requirement of making heaven and those for the use of spiritual gifts. To him, making heaven is the function of one's relationship and total obedience to the command and dictates of the Almighty. Yes, it is possible to live a secret life of sin and still be known by people as a great child of God. But God is not moved by what people say about you or by the claim to be. He knows the value of our relationship with him. He knows those who are willing to act in accordance to his word. Jesus again opened our eyes to the fact that one can walk with God but not with God. Therefore, it is not about what I have done for God but about what I have done with him. As far as Jesus is concerned, we shall be judged based on our work, on the work of our hand. In essence, we shall be judged by the extent to which we have worked with him. Jesus said, it is possible for a person performing wonders with God's gift not to be recognized by heaven. This suggests that we should change our belief that our use of the gift of the Holy Spirit is a guarantee that we shall make heaven. I believe there shall be great surprise on the judgment day. Many shall be surprised and disappointed on the last day. I mean those who believe that what the name of Jesus have done through them will end them the kingdom of heaven. Hear this, we shall all be judged as individuals and not as group or community. Filling the third part while neglecting the first two, we amount to living in illusion. We shall all be judged based on these three parts of one's relationship. Our relationship with God, our ability to obey God's command, our ability to fulfill the purpose here on earth. Again, I repeat, fulfilling the third part while neglecting the first two, we amount to living in illusion. It simply means God is not present in the life of the individual. God needs to know you personally. He needs to know you, know the extent of your fear and reference for him. This will make your worship to become acceptable. If God does not know you, then whatever you propose to do cannot please him. He must know who you are for your work to become pleasing and acceptable to him. Therefore, manifesting the gift of the spirit is one thing why making heaven is another but the genuine manifestation of the love and gift of the spirit and adhering completely to the will and command of god we help us to make heaven at last this day i pray that you will not miss heaven in jesus name chapter three of the same section one the use of spiritual gift shows you are in close contact with God. This assumption is true in some part, but not completely true. This is because the use of our spiritual gift is a way of appreciating God's gift. This makes him gives us more as an individual. This is why the above position represents truth in one part. The Bible contains the totality of God's truth. I think the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit in one's life can draw one closer to God. This should be the parameter for measuring quality relationship with God. Therefore, to judge one's closeness to God by the result one gets by using spiritual gifts, we amount to a very big mistake. Judging one's closeness to God by the growth of the fruit of the Holy Spirit should be a better way to judge. Look at this way. Spiritual gift is that special ability which you are endowed with by the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, on the other hand, is the virtue of the Holy Spirit. Virtue is a virtue the Holy Spirit helps us to exhibit. It comes out of you. It takes great discipline and absolute dependent on God to flow in it and to sustain it. It is worthy of note that spiritual gifts can die because becomes corrupt and depreciate when one is not in proper use. The fruit of the Holy Spirit gives life to the gift of the Holy Spirit. This means that the effectiveness of the gift of the Spirit is dependent on the growth of the fruit of the Spirit in us. Show me a highly gifted individual who lacked the fruit of the Spirit and I will show you a man that will temporarily be celebrated. Show me a church or community that grows, that grew up 
only with great manifestation of the gift of the Holy Spirit. For example, gift of healing, prophecy, and discernment, but lack the fruit of the Spirit. And I will show you a church or a community that will not go far. They will end up raising spectators who will come to watch the display of spiritual gift, but we never identify with the church. Show me a community where the gift of the Holy Spirit are not displayed in high proportion, but with much presence of the fruit of the Spirit. And I will show you a church that will grow with time. The growth may be gradual, but because of the foundation is well laid out, committed members will be raised. God is drawn to an environment where there is love, patient, unity, and so on, and displayed in great measure. This is so because God is love. God cannot be separated from the environment of love. It is such an environment that creates the opportunity for the gift of the Spirit to manifest. Quickly, let us move to section 2. Where section 2 is the manifestation of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Under this section 2, we are going to have three different kinds of deduction. The first deduction in this section 2 is this. It is the manifestation it is a manifestation now to each one the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good first corinthians 12 verse 7. take note that apostle paul calls the gift of the spirit manifestation he says that this manifestation of the spirit are given to every man for the common good of all what does he really mean to manifest to manifest simply means to show the existence of a thing, to prove a thing, and to display that which is inside. The only way we can deduct that a thing exists is when it is proved. Christianity is not just a religion, but the life of Christ manifesting among men. From the beginning, the people who follow, honor, and reference God are known by their lifestyle. Manifestation is truly important because there is no other way to know the spirit except when it displays its characteristics. Therefore, neglecting the manifestation is to overlook the only way to know the characteristics of a spirit. In Old Testament days, those who worship God and the devil were known by their manifestation. Where the manifestations are negative, they were known to be of the devil. But where the manifestations are good and for the helpful of humanity, it was known to be of the Spirit of God. The prophet of Ba, Pharaoh of Egypt, the Philistian God and his worshiper, would have successfully deceived many if there were no manifestation their manifestation portrayed them as negative group such manifestation includes oppression victimization wickedness suppression and lack of regard for humanity this manifestation did not help humanity but killed many they showed clearly the kind of spirit at work in them note that it takes the spirit the known to reveal the unknown god himself said according to exodus chapter 3 6 and 7 that he has seen the wickedness the wicked manifestation of the egyptian over his people the proof is that it was on the base on that basis that god came down to deliver his people so also humanity can distinguish one type of tree from another depending on their fruit to abolish evil in the land of egypt god had to manifest is power in such a manner that evil cannot withstand it manifestations shows the kind of three ones bear let us see the way apostle paul put it to the church in galatia when some negative influential people came into the church they came in to deceive people turn them around in order to lead them back into the wrong way paul said to them do not be deceived God cannot be mocked. A man.